puppy when they get level, set the hook. Set the hook, okay? If you reel down on that fish and keep pressure on him, I don't know why it is. I have a theory, and that's all it is because I can't prove anything. If I keep pressure on him, nine, I'd say eight out of ten of those fish will swim right to the boat. They won't come up. That's where the work starts then, getting them off the bottom. It's almost like they're confused or curious about what's going on. Why is this, what's this mysterious force that's, I'm not sure if that's the truth or not. But it seems like if you just not try to horse them out of it, just try to hold your ground, it seems like a lot of times they will swim towards the pressure, wondering what it is. And when they get there, you start trying to move that fish up off the bottom, and then it's a whole different story. Then they realize, time to put on a little shovel. But they, you know, a lot of times they go up through, but you know, a lot of times once you get them to the bottom boat, you know, it doesn't seem to be a lot of lateral movement. It's all about you working them up, and then they go back down, you know. But it teaches you a lot too, because you're, you're using your drag, Use the rod, use the line, use that. That's what this stuff is for. This stuff is all designed to wear out a fish. Don't just <coughs> tie a big ass reel to a, a thing and, and put 70 pound line on it and just try to hook the fish and just, because you know what, those are the guys that overdo it that lose more fish than anybody. Because wherever that hook is, that skin, it can only take so much pressure. Now, if you've got it hooked through the roof of the mouth or the bony body, you know, you might win that battle. But use, that's why I like mono. Got a little bit of stretch. Cajun, I don't get paid one dime in any way, shape, or form from Cajun to say it, but I started using Cajun 10 years ago. I'll never use another line for flatheads. I have seen it do the most incredible, stupid incredible stuff. I've got fish out of, out of root balls and rocks with this, this line. That line got into the boat. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tie up my hamster to a post with it because I'd be worried to get off. I mean, it, it is what it is. You use what you use, and if it works for you, don't change just because I stood here and said mine's better. If you're using something, you're catching good fish, and it ain't letting you down, don't change it. Don't get on the internet tonight and look for 50 different knots if your knots never failed you. Why would you want to do that? If what you're doing is working, great. The whole point of a seminar is maybe you'll pick up something that you never thought of. So hopefully, that's where I've got you to today. As you can tell, I'm pretty passionate about catfish. I never messed around for anything. I've been fishing the Rock River now for 38 years. I can still remember my dad carrying me across the river, setting bank poles when I was four or five years old and I wasn't tall enough to go. All my memories when it comes to fishing are flathead memories and catfish memories. Uh, and I do my best to try and pass on the passion that I have for it and try to convince people that if you're not doing it and you're not doing it regularly, you're really missing out. Because you only gotta catch one and you'll never forget it. You catch one big fish, one big flathead and I guarantee you You'll have a thousand fish memories from your whole life. That'll be the first one that you think of every day you wake up. So, with that being said, got any questions? A couple. Yes, sir. So with the temperature, you said like, you know, you're fishing over 50, is there like perfect temperature? That works the best. There it is, you know, in the, remember they're cold blooded like most fish. So their metabolism, is what the water temperature is. So naturally, they need to eat more the hotter the water is. They don't, I mean, that's, they, however, in the fall of the year, that magic temperature, for me, when that water has started to drop and hit that 65, 68 degree range, that seems to trigger them to start kind of People want to say strap on the feed bag. I think that's a bad term. I think it's just fish start to start to congregate in areas they're going to spend the winter in, so you're putting your bait in front of more fish, so you're seeing more action. Uh, don't know if that's right either, but that's just the way I think. But that 65, 68 degree temperature, especially in the fall of the year, seems to be dynamite. And then again in the spring also, when they start to feed up in the pre-spawn, generally 
Mayish, June, even sometimes late April, depending on Mother Nature. Just yeah. if you go if you all fish at all, you know the last few years in Illinois. I mean, high water, low water, hot, cold, blah. I mean, it's gone all over the place. But again, in the spring, that that 60 mid 60 mark for pre-spawn, and then again uh, before they winter, seems to be a, a really dynamite temperature. <coughs> But not during the summer months, 70s, 80s, you know, I mean, obviously you don't want to get it so warm to where you're depleting the oxygen in the water and fish start dying, but, you know, upper 70s, 80s, they have to feed to sustain that mass, and their metabolism's going. So, I guess that's where you can look at it. Yes, sir. It's, uh, how do you rig these uh, shaft that you were talking about? A lot of guys, again, too, that's a good question, will say that, you know, if you're going to use a 15, 18 inch shad, you know, you should make you get a great big hook. Well, again, I'm going to tell you, I have a great hookup read, and I don't agree with that either. I run a Matsuo hook, it's super sharp, and it's a seven odd hook. And I use that from anything to two or three by three inch cut baits, which, again, a cut bait is a good bait for a flathead, but especially in the cool water periods when the metabolism is slowing down and they don't want a great big meal, okay? I use a hook like this in for cut baits this big as well as a 17 inch shad. The key is where you bait to leave the hook exposed. And that's why I like this, this exaggerated bend in this hook because when I hook this through behind the tail fin of the shad, okay, or the adipose fin if you call it on a bullhead or whatever, it holds the tip of the hook out off the side of the bait just a hair. Remember, you want to hook a bait good enough to where you can cast it, but thin enough to where when you set the hook, it pulls out of the bait. We want it to pull out of the bait into the flathead. And that action pulling out of the bait also makes the hook rotate, so it helps a lot of things. But um, So you want to be behind the adipose? Uh, right, right in the back side of the fish. And there's no... There's no guy like a deer target where it says you got to hit here to kill a deer, and then you got to hit here to the lungs and liver. In that area, okay, because you because you hook a half inch further forward or backward than me is not going to screw up your day, all right, or make you right or me right or you wrong. What's the leader? It's the same as the line, thirty pound. I run all thirty. Is that what you meant or the length? Yes. No. What kind of line is? It? Cajun. Okay. Cajun red. Sorry. 30 pounds. Slide in there and that's, that's what you've got to do. Yep. Now you can see the bead under there. The beads are designed to protect the knots. However, they're not really necessary. I mean, I get snagged up all the time with big sinkers and I pull and pull and pull and pull and break them off, pull the leader off and bring it back in there. Yeah, and sometimes your swivel is, the eye of the swivel is a little bent up, but if you want to be politically correct, yeah, bead underneath it is a good way to cushion that knot. Will it affect you from catching a big fish if you don't have a beat? Probably not. But if you're taking the kids fishing, you want to throw on some of them cool pink and purple beads, just so you uh, whatever it takes to get a kid interested. In. Yes, sir. You're using cut um, shad for cut bait also. Yeah, yeah. You could, you know, and that's a good thing about flathead fishing with baits like that. You know, some days you might not catch a flat. You know, say, you know, but you might catch a accidentally catch a seven, eight, nine pound channel cavity. 